the Losers Club and the Stranger Things in the End of the Fucking World, or the alternate reality where only Bev and Stanley be Pennywise, is released, and I am okay with this. There's nothing awful to rip apart. There were good moments. The powers, the hedgehog, the emotional times, how it ended suddenly right when it was going to get good and now we have to wait a year. But I did enjoy it, so if you'll let me, I will share my thoughts and theories for season one. I keep losing my temper. It's all good. We're all human rage compilations sometimes. I don't want to, but it just spills out. Yeah. Oh, car chop. There's your ketchup, bitch! And it spills out a lot. Even over non-threatening conversations like dinner. Can you just make sure that Liam eats some dinner? I think old enough to make sure himself. Sydney? Honey, you gotta take out the trash. Something is bound to go wrong. Then we meet Stan, a Stan I'm sure we've seen before. Stan is kind of weird. Shoes. Who needs them? It's taken him a few years to recover from Pennywise. Let him be. He lost his shoes in that fight, right? Sure, it's official. I'm gonna pick up her shift tonight, which is fine, because I owe her two shifts from the time Liam ate all that cheese. So what I should remember as a viewer, Liam and cheese don't mix. Possible story climax is one. <laughs> Episode 2, Sid's brother, Goob introduces us to the one everyone loves the most, Banana Wigglesworth, that is sure to outlive everyone. So Sid has to get groceries, but since she never wants us to watch that, she argues with her mom, reveals her preferred method to get groceries as sexual favors from strangers, and then she gets going. Hey, change your sweater. Sydney. Good thing she's not my mom. I can get away with my black and white flannel for a week before someone stops me. Hey, I need your car. Are you kidding? Yeah, get it. Wait, 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 wait. I got this. Gladys, I'm gonna take 20. Gladys is AFK. So Stan goes with Sid, who bombs a store, smokes some hash browns, and praises the VHS. VHS? Also, some interactions feel like it's a choice-based game. Tell them about your powers, or- I got pimples on my thighs. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 3. So Goob's in the mood for puzzles and sends Sid down to get some, but is ruined when she's reminded of old memories of her dad and how puzzles used to be their thing they did together, and Sid accidentally disturbs the upstairs. I murdered a hedgehog. The show just wants to rip our hearts out, doesn't it? Can't know anything cute exists for too long. Penelope Wigglesworth never bothered nobody. And may I address the soundtrack? Do they just get a research team around the clock to find the most fitting song titles for every scene? Dean is my best friend. I see it. I like it. I want it. You're aiming too high. Bad things. Hedgehog dies every time you go away. What are their fucking priorities? They need to show their work. You think that um, banana is with dad now? I don't know about heaven, but I'm hoping that there's fan art of Shadow Dad holding the banana. So Sid convinces herself that the hedgehog that they just buried was her dad, which I did like. I like sad stuff, and it's a good outlet to get out her feelings about her dad. Episode 4, while she's dealing with that, she says some swear words. <laughs> you start all the potions! Which surprisingly scared me not the second time, but the third time. But it's okay, because Goob made us some dinner to feel better. Macaroni, cheese, maple syrup, A1, ham, corn, margarine, cinnamon fish sticks, soy sauce, grape jelly, crushed graham crackers, and something in a jar in the fridge, but I'm not sure what. I call it Liam's Loaded Lasagna. Hey guys. If the newest binging with Babish isn't this, I'm gonna be sad. So Sid and Stan meet up at the bowling alley to see what harnesses her powers with popcorn and bowling pins, but it is short-lived when Stan messes up by mentioning her dad and she mistakes Stan as the pins and almost kills him. Which was his own fault. He had to do it to you, didn't you? So she leaves. And then the good old shadow dad has a visit. That's just a theory of mine. Episode 5, they have to suffer Mr. Whitaker. Everyone take a seat. Hurry! He may be grumpy right now, but you'll see why he's the best. Between now and 7 p.m., you're gonna scrape up every goddamn piece of gum from the bleachers. Will there be a break for snacks or dinner? You can have your mistakes for dinner! <laughs> but thank you for reminding me. I'm gonna get myself some dinner. So Sid finds a library that communicates through lights. So she beats it up and leaves. But they gotta snag the security camera footage from there because... Stan and I had sex in the library, and it's, it's all on tape. Show your work. So their master plan that I love so much, you may have to sit down for this, set off a burrito bomb, fiddle with the keys, hide, poke the fire alarm, fiddle with the keys part two, hide, commit property damage, meanwhile this man's getting his work out on. Some goddamn old for this shit. And finally get into the office and have the library footage in their possession. And after all that, we finally can- Hey! 
Which one of you punks eats burritos? I don't know what the hell went on tonight, but I want to see everyone in my office first thing in the morning. Like a breakfast burrito family sesh? We've all earned it. Except for him. He cheated on his girlfriend. He doesn't get burrito. Episode 6. Sid's therapist suggests the man she saw disappearing in the library were grief hallucinations of her father. And when Sid's mom tells the story of her dad, it connects to Sid the more you listen. The reason he was the only one that lived through an explosion everyone else died in means it was a power made from him, probably from all the fear and anger he had that day, just like what Sid's going through. It's what hit me the most. Final episode, make and bake a pancakes. But the rest of it, I will leave you to watch it yourself. I'll give you someone's reaction to it. But I'm very excited to see more of a father-daughter bond for season 2, which are what my theories revolve around right now, and is something we've seen before and love dearly. So if you enjoyed, share with a friend, and I hope to see you in the next one. So, bye for now, see you soon! Now we just need the straps and the hallway sex swing will be complete. It went from a nice little video for me experimenting with my commentary to one of my favorites to rewatch.